Hello and welcome to the Xenothesis podcast. My name is Richard Acton, and this week we're covering uh, chapter one of part three, Nursery, of book one, Dawn, of Octavia Butler's Xenogenesis trilogy. Uh, I'm joined, as always, by my co-host. Michael Glinka. Hey, everyone. Hi, Michael. Oh, How's it going? Good, good. Um, a new section of the book. It's quite exciting, to be honest. Um, uh, mm. I th- The first chapter, uh, quite lengthy, so today we'll just cover one chapter of the book. Um, yes. But... The, book, the chapter started very interestingly and I it's I'm really, really look, looking forward to the rest of the book now like I mean the book was good right don't get me wrong it's so mm-hmm. far what I've read Richard I thought that it was it's a really well written book um but now I'm, I'm really getting into the story and see what's gonna happen because I think the action really is starting sort of now if you know what I mean I think yeah a, this is a whole kind of new um new arc in the narrative right we've got a uh uh, a new starting point is a this next um section in in lilith's uh experience with the owen carly um you know, we're getting a whole bunch of new uh or, or not quite new characters just yet but the the promise of many new characters yes um, a, bit, a brief in- introduction to some of them or mm. all of them who knows um, yeah and but... we've got a, a jump forward in time before we before we start this off as well uh, yeah, quite a. a, a Lith has kind of had had some time with Yo and Carly, and we, we learned that she spent some time uh, doing like rainforest survival training, just sort of in the middle here. We, the time jumps kind of like slipped in pretty subtly. So yeah, it's 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 quite a interesting um, first chapter. Uh, maybe I should predict uh, start with my predictions because I feel yeah, like yeah yeah let's uh, let's go into that. I think we should start, but also my other predictions from the last episode. Like, so what I wrote down is this: that we are a bit forward in time with Lilith still taking care of Nikanj, who finally starts to wake up. That was my prediction that I wrote mm. down. But last episode, um, I was mentioning that the you know the name nursery of the chat of mm. the section may indicate that actually Lilith may start having some interaction with some humans. I did, I think, if I remember correctly, specifically say human children. But so that was a bit more closer to the reality than what yeah, I yeah. actually wrote I mean, down. It, you got the fact there was a time jump, um, probably a bit bigger than you were expecting. Yeah. Uh, you, and, and, you know, you had a variety of different speculations on what nursery might mean. Um, this wasn't quite exactly one of them, but it was pretty close to a couple. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> no, but honestly, I feel like the. F- you know, now reading this chapter, um, mm-hmm. I had this feeling that, um, you know, like the very, very uh, prediction I made several episodes ago about mm. um, what the story might be about, you know, some um, rebellion or something along those lines from the humans and uh, Lilith mm-hmm. trying to sort of, you know, appease to the own Kali but um in the reality sort of planning something behind their back right Mm -hmm. this chapter really sort of made me feel like this so actually might happen because the way we're introduced Mm -hmm. to the characters and different types of the characters that um as we get to chapter summary in a second that Lilith will introduce to us um it feels like some of them are capable of such thing. Okay. So, Interesting. So it just feels to me that this, like, I really want to finish reading this book, mm. like, right now, because I, <laughs> <laughs> I want to know what's happening later, yeah. and it's just so infuriating, mm. but... I think you had predicted before that uh, you know, she would be put in with this cohort of people that she was supposed to be training at some point. Um, yes, yes. But that never quite materialized earlier when you were expecting it, so... Uh, yeah, I mean, as I said, this book really sort of introduces a concept and situations that are hard to predict. Whereas, and at the points where I can't really think of, when I think the flow of the book will go one direction, but it goes completely different. But each of those, hmm. like, you know, stories, like when I completely missed the story on Paul Titus, right? It mm-hmm. all added to, you know, how Lilith is feeling now and the situation she is in, so... Yeah, it's a. I think it's it's quite an original narrative structure, to be honest. It's a. Uh, I I like the 
the structure of this book. It's uh, quite unusual. I, I feel like I'm so used to reading fantasy books that are so like easy digestible books, right? So that you, mm -hmm. you read and you can easily predict what's going to happen next. That yeah. this book really makes me feel a bit on my toes. I would mm. say a lot of them have you know very classic hero's journey type arcs but uh this is you know a, a, a rather different journey for our hero it's, yes it's yes, not quite the yes. same uh as the the prototypical structure there shall we uh launch into the summary of events yeah yeah absolutely let's do it then uh, we'll start the summary with a bit of shuffle that I, we're, we're compared to what the chapter actually goes through because it makes more sense chronologically uh, to introduce the chapter. So the first style we start is that just before the whole event start, Lilith asks Nikanj, uh, who's already awake, uh, probably already after his metamorphosis and you know, full, full maturation, to she, if she could see stars. So... Mm. Uh, the day before the events where she is put in a, a giant room, which we'll get to it, um, Nikanj takes her to what seemed to be an observatory of some sorts. And on the way uh, to that said observatory, they took an elevator, which what Nikanj told her is actually more like a gas bubble moving harmlessly through a living body. So a giant fart basically lifted them up to the observatory. <laughs> That's why it was my literally my first uh, immature thought on that. And uh, to be honest, yeah, I felt yeah. like this whole idea of the bubble, right? You know, it's a mm. harmless bubble. Like, um, first of all, how strong does the, um, I don't know, the whatever the... Surface tension? Surface tension have to be to be able to lift up um someone what's the gas inside that's so light that you know we know that in our world hydrogen is the lightest uh um gas so what the volume of the bubble would have to be to actually you know raise two beings potentially some platform as well to to certain level and also how do you go down mm -hmm. i mean the bubble will go up but how does it go down do you like mm -hmm. does the body uh, yeah, fill it, fill it with some uh, heavier gases so that it just goes starts to slowly descend yeah, and then there's the whole what's going on with the gravity thing as well, right? Because presumably they having they have to use spin gravity or, or something to that effect. So yeah, um, it's yeah, a it's a bit tricky to imagine how exactly that would work, but it is an interesting notion. And the, the other thing that occurred to me immediately was when it uh, said like a gas bubble moving harmlessly through a living body. I was like, mm, did that, have you ever heard of air emboli? Those are pretty nasty. Oh yes, uh, yes, absolutely. Yeah, Any air say. bubble in your blood system would could really mess you up. Hmm. Yeah, you could, they can cause strokes and all kinds of stuff. And like the uh, you know divers get the bends. That's like nitrogen bubbles forming in in joints and and in blood vessels. Like pretty nasty. Uh, so yeah, it's it's yeah. it's like that's why. You know, in films, when everyone's always like, they've got a needle, they fill it up with something, and they like flick it and push a little bit of liquid out the top. Like, yes. You see that in like every time anyone's giving an injection. That's specifically to avoid putting bubbles in people's bloodstreams. Yeah, no, absolutely. This is like the standard practice because, um, and I think it's interesting, right? When you mention the movies, I think they had to do this in the movies because in the past, like if you had you no know, injection, right, they probably wouldn't do that. But like. I think movie makers are, I suspect, have to do this because in case anybody tries to um, do an injection by themselves in themselves to prevent any damage of, like, as said, you know, in injecting yeah. some bubbles into themselves. The yeah, I mean, I doubt they, they have to do it. They're probably just interested in, in realism and, and I suppose also, like, yeah, safety, right? You wouldn't want to broadcast doing that um, in a way that might kill you. Yeah, basically, uh, that's, uh, I, I thought that might be some things like um, not showing certain things or how certain things are done to protect people. You mm, know? Yeah. Oh, it's, it's generally much more important in arterial blood flow than it is in yes. venous blood flow as well. Like in, it's a bit less likely to cause you any harm if it's in a, in a vein. So yeah, I was just wondering now if the, like how does the 
bubble work like i mean what's the surface made out of right because you know you can make easily bubbles with um a bit of washing up liquid you know and that that will work for you know several seconds mm. but that's not strong enough there are some chemicals i think that you, they can make really strong bubbles but i think adding corn flour cornstarch corn flour to it i think cornstarch is and then it makes them quite more stronger but like in mm. our bodies you know different enzymes and mucuses and stuff like that but it's still yeah, i don't some, think some kind of surfactant enough. like thing to well actually no, that would that would reduce the surface tension but yeah it's something to um to increase the surface tension yeah yeah but i mean i, I don't know if it's a little unclear if they're actually on the bubble or in the bubble or whether or not the bubble is being used to push something through a tube maybe because that I could I could see that being easier to accomplish, right? If you yeah, I a, think it would... a, an elevator box and then yeah, yeah, something like mm. a bubble pushing something from below. But yeah, hmm. yeah, we're probably getting too deep on the the bubble thing. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, so hey, anyway, there, like, so anyway, so she gets to an observatory in a giant bubble. However, that works. <laughs> yes, and once at the observatory. Um, we are show like described uh, what she could see, and she can see the Earth, and mm. within there she she was trying to find some of the recognizable um, continents if they're still the same, and as Lily describes, there are many more stars that are usually visible from the surface of the planet. You know, that's obvious because of the lack of pollution and the atmosphere, mm. and. Nikan let her look at the sky until her own tears blinded her. And then, as the book described, then it wrapped a sensory arm around her and led her to the great room. And this is where um, the actual chapter begins. I empathize with, with Lilith in this moment because one, one of the photos that really gives me chills uh, is Earthrise. You know, the, the famous Apollo photo mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. you've got Earth coming up over the moon. Yeah, yeah, I know which one you were talking about, yes. Yeah. It's... And uh, the, the pale blue dot photo from you know, Carl Sagan's whole uh, amazing little, uh, uh, it's almost poetry, uh, describing the, you know, say, to be honest, all the people who have ever lived and yeah. on this dot. To be honest, any picture of Earth I see, you know, it's it always blows my mind because it's just like we live you know we're only able to affect certain amount of environment around us and it's still just a grain of sand uh, compared to the size of the planet and but what really blew mm. my mind recently was the pictures of 4k pictures of the um, uh, mission on mars from the curiosity rover oh, yeah, yeah. and it's just the sheer realization in my mind that holy shit we are actually taking pictures of a different planet like it really yeah, made me when yeah, you see those images that are transmitted over those kind of huge distances and you, 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 know, you think about the the fact that you know, they're a different celestial body uh, but also, I mean, it's kind of a, it's a weird place in scale, right? Because at the same time, you see the immensity of Earth, and it's huge, and the, the vastness of it, but also it's it's dwarfed by its surroundings, right? Yes. So it makes you feel small and large at the same time. I guess it's just, I think, deep inside, when I see those pictures, I just feel like it's a shame that in my generation, we won't be able to um, traverse that vast amount of space in any meaningful way to actually see all those other planets i mean you know i haven't seen that much of mm. earth either but like it's just i don't know i'm just the curiosity of my mind that we like to see this I'd say, I, I certainly wouldn't dismiss the possibility that we're we have people on mars in our lifetimes that's you know that's possible that's possibility but yeah yeah, that's that's yeah. one possibility, and that would mm. be a great achievement yeah. on our, on the side of humanity. But anyway, let's get on to the chapter. Uh, yes, yeah, let's um, get into the the main body of things. Yes, yeah, so the actual chapter starts with the description of a new place where Lilith was staying, um, a room larger than a football field with soft yellow lights on the ceiling. We learned that 
Lilith has now the ability to make walls grow, to make rooms by herself. Uh, by herself. But we also learned that she, even though she can manipulate the interior walls um, that respond to her body fluids, uh, to her will, with her will, she can't create an exit to outside. Um, basically, she's in a cage again, a much larger one, but a cage nonetheless. And um, yeah. Lilith was also asked Nikanj to teach the ship. Uh, to be able to paint the walls uh, so that she could make the walls pale green and the floors pale brown compared to the grace she was you know way she awakened first time yeah yeah that um, contrast for her people as well i think would be good right she yeah. wants something other than the blank gray solitary cells that everyone's been used to I would give it like, you know, give a splash of yellow and a splash of pink, you know, a little sand there, you know, just, just to like, uh, pay it, <laughs> <laughs> just to... Uh, yeah, she said pretty muted, right? It wasn't overly... Yeah, like pale like, green, you know, pale bright brown. Bright reds and stuff. It's a bit boring. Yeah. Give it like a bright fluorescent pink, like you, they open their <laughs> eyes first time and it's like, oh my God, why? Yeah, I think it might be. <laughs> it doesn't want to overwhelm anyone. <laughs> so we could get a, um intimidation tactic. That, you know, like she touches the wall and suddenly all the colors change, yeah. like, you know, hallucinogenic colors. That would be, well, that would be, <laughs> yeah, be I, yeah. I wouldn't probably be a best, a good person to do this stuff, what she uh, Lily has to do right now. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's mess with the, the people who've been in solitary confinement by making them have hallucinogenic colors in the walls as soon as they awake. That will go well, that'll, uh, that'll be smooth, yeah. So uh, back to the chapter uh, for our silliness. Mm -hmm. So we are told that um, Lilith um, has stores of food and clothing that were encapsulated within the walls um, in various unmarked cabinets um, within Lilith's room and both at the ends mm -hmm. of the great room. Um, the food in the, those cabinets would replenish itself as it was used, replaced by the ship itself, which drew on its own substance to make print reconstructions of whatever each cabin had been taught to produce. Which is quite interesting. Is like the, basically hmm. the 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 ship is like three D printing everything um, yeah. on the go. Kind of a bit like Star Trek replicatory, but I, I believe there's much more. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I mean, like, it's... But, uh, yeah, we had this conversation on the 3D printer last episode. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, it's... it's. I think it's quite interesting that the ship has the ability to, to do that, to do so. Hmm. And we also learned that the place also had a day-night cycle, as Nikanj told Lilith that it is a good time for her to start getting used to having a planetary night again. Yeah, this kind of... Uh, um... It's a, it's a little nitpick, but this kind of sat oddly with me in that like if she's just been training to be in like rainforest survival, mm -hmm. then that would really kind of need to have a, a day-night cycle wherever they've got that going on. Because uh, so many of the plants and animals and stuff that would exist in that environment are going to be dependent upon an Earth-like day-night cycle to mm -hmm. function normally, right? The ecology would just be or screwed up if it was constantly lit that just wouldn't work that bugged me a little bit but other than that I... well you know it depends on how and when they go on the training like it's uh or whether it where exactly did you see that um training section because i don't i think i missed it uh, there's it's just one sentence um where it's like she mentions um Ah, I see it, I see it. Then no chance... Uh, then why had they made her spend a year being taught to yes. live in a tropical forest? Hmm. Oh yeah, it's true. That's, that is a bit of a, um inconsistency in the story. Yeah, it's a, it's a minor biological sort of error, I suppose. But, but do you think maybe that uh, rainforest training might be was on a ship? I'm assuming that they have some kind of emulated rainforest environment on the ship in which to train her oh i see so in that That's... way like they could have just um emulate the day night cycle on the ship because I, I couldn't imagine her being on the hmm. earth yet that... no no although i suppose maybe it's just uh, maybe i'm reading too much into that maybe they didn't actually like put her in an environment and just kind of like you know uh abstract kind of training oh like, i see book I see. learning as opposed to practical but I'd, who knows that's possible Right, so 
and here the chapter then turns into um, a sort of description of what Lilith needs to be uh, needs to do. Um, hmm. Basically, the, in summary of the chapter, um, Lilith has uh, has the following objective: to wake up at least forty people from eighty given to her in that great room hidden behind the um, uh, walls, concealed behind the walls. And basically, Liv is contemplating throughout the whole chapter to whom she should awaken first um, to start. Because she was told that she is not allowed to leave uh, that room unless there are, she has 40 other humans with her willing to meet mm-hmm. the Kali without trying to rip their heads off. So yeah, quite a quite a difficult task she's been assigned there. Yeah, honestly, like I mean, you know, the Onkali um were trained, you know, they're doing one by one, but now she has to make basically a team of forty people of, you know, cooperating forty people. And I feel like this is gonna be super difficult, especially with the type of people that she was uh that she we will be introduced in a second. Yeah, we get um, a sort of little summary because um, she's given like a, a, a short dossier um, on all of th- these 80 people and we get a, a sort of peek at about 10 of them. Yes, yes. So we learn more about the sort of the design of the room. So basically there are bathrooms on one end of the wall and on one, one side of the room opposite to that there's a wall of the human beings being hidden behind there. Um, concealed behind walls, um, all healthy, under 50 year old, English speaking, una- and unaware of what's in store for them. And as I mentioned, in the, her mission, Liv's mission was to awake four of them and make sure they are ready to meet the Onkali. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, I quite like the fact that she went to the, to the trouble of, of uh, having them all be English speaking, right? Uh, there's not some hand wavy MacGuffin that handles the fact that people don't speak the same language, oh, yes, which yes. is all too common in, in science fiction. But I mean, sometimes it's done well, or at least funnily, like, um, I don't know, the Babel fish in Hitchhiker's Guide, which is hilarious. Oh, I need to fin- I need to read the Hitchhiker's Guide. I read it once and I need to reread it because it's such a good story. Yeah, it's amazing. Uh, <laughs> completely nuts, but very funny. I think it's yeah, there's a few places where it's done very hand wavily, like um, Stargate. It's like everyone speaks English because they're all from ancient Egypt. No, because that oh, tracks. No, it was because of the aliens. Actually, all originate from the aliens. The and then they all spoke the yeah. p- the the p- uh, original language that all the language derived from. So they could all speak the same language. Man, Stargate yeah, was yeah. awesome. <laughs> I, I, I I love Stargate, but they definitely hand waved some of the language yes, stuff. Yes, uh, yes. They like addressed it briefly with some stuff from um, it, it, uh, it, uh, God damn it! What's the name of the the doctor? Um, I don't remember. Uh, I really don't Michael remember. Jackson. Don't ask me. Anyway, no, that doesn't make sense. Anyway, uh, God damn it! <laughs> or is it no Daniel Jackson? That's the one. Look, I knew that there's a Jackson or something in there. Yeah, there we go. Daniel well Jackson. Well done. Well done remembering <laughs> it. Uh, but anyway, yeah, they, they address that with him like super early on and then like ignore it for the rest of the show. <laughs> ah, that's one way of uh, dealing with a unwanted problem. Anyway. Anyway. Back so to the, back uh... to the story. So at the time of the um, story uh, taking place, it has been three days for Lilith to being alone in that great room. And as hmm. Richard mentioned, Onkali let uh, with her 80 dossiers with biographies of each of the sleeping stranger and we are told that she read half of them looking for potential allies so initially obviously she wanted to wake up people those people that she thought that she can trust trust and become friends with and that they will support her decisions or at least support her in one way or another she needed someone who can share the burden of what she knew and what she must do as the book describes and people who would tell her if she was making a mistake or a, a fool, as she you know, as she described it. Yeah, yeah. There's a really good. Um, there's like three sentences that I really liked here. It's like she needed thoughtful people who would hear what she had to say and not do anything violent or stupid. She needed people who could give her ideas, push her mind in directions she might otherwise miss. 
She needed people who could tell her when they thought she was being a fool. People whose arguments she could respect. Which is a, I enjoyed that sentence. Yeah, I think this was a really good decision. Like, you know, good thinking uh, on her side to you know mm. to, to make decisions more based you know based on that sort of on those um, what's the word uh, criteria? criteria. Yes, that's the word I was looking for because you know she will have to somehow manage forty people, all strangers. Mm. That who knows? So who knows what may happen? Yeah, I said she's a. You know, a competent level-headed individual right i have a lot of respect mm. for for lilith yes uh, absolutely I like her character um, so but on the other hand obviously she did not want to awaken anyone like in general so it, all, hmm. we learn a bit more like what's going on inside her because obviously she's scared of the people that not be especially after the whole situation with paul titus and hmm. You know, her mission was to prepare those people to meet on Kali. And this is what the book says. How could she awaken people and tell them they were part of a genetic engineering scheme of a species so alien that the humans would not be able to look at it comfortably for a while? And, you know, Lilith was aware there was no escape from mm-hmm. Don Kali. You know, they're on the ship. And even if they tried to escape the big room, um, there's no possibility for them to hide anywhere. And... So she needed a group of people that would behave at least until they're on back on Earth. And her only other possibility, though, she thought that was to refuse to awaken anybody until Don Kali gave up and used another human, like Paul Titus. She, but then you know, it's if someone like him was in charge, probably anything left of any civilization uh, would be lost, and just a primitive gang or. Hmm group would be yeah. formed well uh, it's a it, it, it didn't really have the opportunity to be human civilized in in human culture right that was the uh, the primary problem there right yes so it, if he doesn't have culture then civilization will dissolve but i think also it meant that you know it's not gonna be like the person wakes up and then basically says okay you're my you know you're my bitch you're my bitch you know you're gonna do what i want and you know it's so I think this is more like, and I understand Lilith that if she woken up anybody like that, the whole preparation would be just hmm. done, like done for, because people like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If, if someone in that mindset is in this environment, it's really not going to work. So that that caution is is definitely warranted. Although there's, uh, she seems pretty conflicted about the waking people up thing because I think it was she was reading one one of the person's dossiers and she was like seized by a, a desire to like immediately wake this person up just so she could have another human to talk to yes yes so it's uh, she's lonely and wanting human company but also quite concerned about the possibility of uh, getting the wrong people mm. right and speaking of people maybe let's go in because this is where the book introduces uh the 10 or so of them and so, first of all, the this is the uh, first person, Victor Dominic or Vidor Domonkos. Uh, parents moved from Hungary, uh, from Hungary to US before he was born. 170 centimeters tall, 60 around 63 kilograms in weight. Of course, those values were all written in American pounds and inches and feet, so I converted them to a more uh, understandable values. <laughs> um, he um. was missing three fingers on his left hand because of an accident with a lawnmower. An intelligent, talkative, and understandably suspicious of unseen questionna- questionnaires, and very creative at lying to the Onkali. He was married three times, but had no children, always blamed the wives, but never checked himself uh, to find the cause of his infertility. And this is the best part of the book when the Lilith wrote uh, what the dossier said. He never broke down or cried, but once, once, very calmly said that once he has the chance, he will kill his captors. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, this guy uh, has some slightly concerning reactions, I think, definitely. It's uh, the, the never breaking down and the very calmly threatening thing in extended solitary seems like that's a pretty scary reaction. Yeah, I just... It, I was like, you know, this is what Lily thought, that he was intelligent, but she feared him. And I fully understandable why. 
Mm. Um, so she decided to leave him for later. But a person like that, that can hold their emotions in check in unknown uh, environment to such degree, and then just mm. very calmly, as if because the book described it as if like a a running thought. They said said that once he's out, he's gonna call, kill them all. Just I feel I would not want yeah, to wake up that person. Casual. <laughs> At all. Yeah, yeah. That's um, like it might be useful in a pinch, but maybe not yet. Yeah. I think a good decision on Lilith's part when it comes to uh, Victor Dominic. So the next person, Leah Bed or BD? I, um, I don't know. BD? Maybe, I, I think BD maybe. Sure. I think. Um, was described as quiet, religious, slow, as in slow moving, but not slow witted. Though. Don Kali had not been particularly impressed by her intelligence. And this is where the fun part about her is that she was so patient, so very patient, that mm. she outweighed the Don Kali in solid silence. And when Don Kali tried to make her talk by starving her, she basically almost starved herself to death to against the coercion of cooperation. Yeah, and that's uh, given what we know about how patient the Owen Carly seem from from Lilith, this because this is quite quite a feat. Yeah, I, I it sounds like a person who literally like a like a stone, like a rock, basically you, hmm. you can't uh, unmove unmovable. Staring down an alien intelligence where you don't have any cues <laughs> from like you know, whether or not they're gonna crack, as it were. It seems like even harder to outweigh an Owen Carly than. Or a, you know an, an an anonymous box when you're in the room <laughs> than it does to do it to someone face to face, right? Yeah. So finally, they had to drag her to get any information they wanted, and after a period of letting her regain weight and strength, they put her back into sleep. She was a pale, lean, tired-looking woman, though. And all I had noted that she had a physiological tendency to be heavy, and. Mm. Lily thought that she would be a great friend, but unless Leah thought that uh, Lilith is one of the captors, and I feel like, yeah, that would put her in a quite mm. dangerous situation. Uh, but to be honest, it's understandable, because now we have no... We know a bit more about Lilith's power. So, like, she has the ability to grow walls. Her physical strength was increased as well. Um, she had enhanced mm. memory, and she also had the ability to manipulate the suspended animation plants. So we are told that Arceus was worried about Lily because she was too small, and in their observations of the humans, they found that humans are usually impressed by the size of a being. But mm. Arja and Dichan promised that whatever happens in that room, you know, as long as Lily builds walls around her, they will pull her out and not and prevent any harm to be done to Lilith. Yeah, so it seems like she can be evacuated if she manages to kind of box herself off from everyone else if uh, something goes very well. Yeah, I, I find it very interesting how um, well, how liked by Arches and Dichan Lilith is. Like sort of, there is there is some sort of this hmm. a very closeness uh, because the way the book was describing that, that conversation is just felt that, you know, they really cared about Lilith. Yeah, I think that that's probably something to do with the the helping oh, yes. Nikan through the metamorphosis thing. I think it become she's kind of part of their like family unit as yes, far as they're yes. concerned now. So the next person we are introduced to is Joseph Li Chin Shing, a forty years old engineer from Canada born in Hong Kong. Widower, wife died before the war. He was contemplating suicide before he was captured, but now he has a reason to live to repay them, i.e. The repay the Onkali who saved him. Um, the Onkali thought of putting mm. him with a family, but for some reason they didn't. As they described in the dossier, he was soft but quite deadly. And I don't understand what exactly they meant by that, but they didn't describe any further details into the, his character. Hmm. Um, but And Lilith actually had the massive impulse to awaken him first, but she decided to wait until she reads hmm. le the rest of the dossiers. Yeah, yeah, this was the one where I was mentioning before. Yeah, I think an understandable impulse, right? She's uh, not had any other human contact that was in any way positive for a long time. So, of course, she would want someone, but she actually makes a good decision because mm. she decides to, later on, we learn, to awaken a woman 
to mm -hmm. f to prevent any sexual yeah, yeah. tension forming. Mm. And she she definitely has some. Uh, she's sort of exercising some some self control here and and uh, deciding to you know make a very measured decision about mm. who she wakes up. Mm. True. True. Um, the next person we are introduced to is Celine Ivers, a woman who spent much of her short interrogation crying over the death of her husband and her twin daughters, crying over the captivity and the uncertain future. She wished herself to be dead, but never attempted anything. So Don Kali described as a weak and sorrowing, not stupid, but so easily frightened that she could potentially behave stupidly in under pressure. Hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. Next was Gabriel Rinaldi, a 27-year-old thin, physically uh, physically stronger than he looked, stubborn but not as intelligent as he wanted to believe. He was an actor uh, who confused Don Kali by playing roles for them instead of letting them see him as he was. And Don Kali tried the same technique yeah. as before <laughs> by starving him, but they are uncertain whether he actually showed who he was and whether he was still play you know, playing in front of them. Playing a part, yeah, which I thought that was quite funny, actually. It's a, an interesting one. Right? This, this guy is like, confusing the aliens by pretending to be various characters. It's just... It's a pretending kind of bizarre, to be E.T. Uh, just situation. Know. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and the next uh, character... About, to be honest, just about speaking about this guy is... Um, I thought that... Uh, mm -hmm. An actor like that would be a bit dangerous, don't you think? Somebody who can conceal themselves behind the mask of another, like, character. Yeah, as that sounds like this guy was pretty method, right? It's just, he's really committed to his characters. If they couldn't figure out which persona he was portraying was yes. actually real, yeah, she's got. She was given. Liv was given quite a number of people who are so different, and none of them really a great mm. choice. Uh, the next person was Beatrice Dwyer, and this is interesting because she would not speak to anyone until she was dressed up, so she is really conscious of her body. But the moment she was dressed up, mm. she was bright, likable, and made her interrogators like her so much, and in the book it says that Uloi was a experienced interrogator, that the Uloi actually, because she liked her so much that it wanted her to be her parent. The other Onkali disagreed, though, and it never happened. I think a parent in the sense that Lilith yes, is yes, the yes, parent yes. of the group, right? Uh, she wanted, uh, which is uh, interesting. You, you get these kind of little subtle hints about the characters of all these people that it's like they have these you know, peculiar kind of little things that, that showed up during their interrogation, like this, this woman's totally non-functional when she can't wear any clothes, but as soon as she can wear something, she, she's she'll, the center of the room be okay interesting yeah it's it's quite a co co uh, collection next was mm. hillary ballard a poet artist playwright actress singer and frequent collector of an unemployment compensation so one of those people who's great i don't know like great uh dreams mm. of very creative, very creative had dreams of being an actress but most of the time because of lack of job collecting unemployment compensation mm. very bright but don Kali had to put her back to sleep because she broke her two arms trying to escape her cage now that is a resolution yeah. i need to say to to like mm. i guess she was trying to punch through the walls or something and um yeah as i'm not even sure how you managed to break two arms in basically an empty box that's uh, quite an impressive degree of determination to get out i mean you know some people, like you know, in when they're locked, they exhibit the adrenaline shot through them. Um, can make them exhibit, you mm. know, mm. not feel the pain and a very, you know, the strength yeah, increases yeah. because of the adrenaline flowing through the uh, uh, body. So I can imagine her just literally trying to rip off the walls, um, knowing there's no exit mm. and mm. basically or punching through them and then just basically breaking her arms in some way. Uh, maybe she has uh, some kind of claustrophobia that is a possibility and just being confined made her panic yes yes that, that is actually a possibility uh, another person we are introduced today is Conrad Lohr uh, called Kurt a cop from New York only survived because his wife took him to Colombia 
and his wife was killed during one of the riots after the bombs fell um during you know after the people started panicking when the bombs started falling around and kurt was picked up by the onkali with seven children none of his own because four of his children he that stayed in america died during the bombing and he was basically hmm. trying to protect those kids and the in the dossier they basically describing that he needed people to have people to look after because that was his basically reason to live uh, and when he was left alone he yeah. basically tried to tear out his own th- um throat with his fingernails um so it's yeah that's uh another a bit of extreme but to be honest i can see him one of the people mm. to wake up and there's already several of those um those inner sort of circle lilith's inner circle awaken because then mm. he would be a mm. good person to protect yeah yeah i think does lilith have that thought explicitly i think she's she's thinking that like not not until yeah yeah yeah, yeah. The, yes yes yeah someone to to take under his wing yes that's correct she she does say that that you know mm. until later she'll leave him until later mm. Um, the next person, not much told about, Derek Volsky, 23, single, working in Australia, didn't know what to do with himself, did a lot of part-time jobs, but he loved photography. His father thought that it was a waste of time, but the man loved photography. So I guess another creative soul that basically mm. was just trying to find his place in the world, just loved the environment and the scenery. So maybe a mm-hmm. nice, calm addition to one uh, to her friends and finally tate mara uh, a person that has been described quite well in this um and and mm. is one of those people who and the first one to be awakened so quickly bored had some genetic problem that the onkali controlled but not cured and this is interesting don't you think richard that there was some yeah. genetic problem that they just decided to control not to cure compared to all over mutations that other people had like Lilith's tendency to have cancer hmm. I wonder a couple yeah it's an interesting one and it's kind of vague about what exactly this problem was I, I, I suppose it might kind of be hinted that it was something vaguely like maybe ADHD like because of this attention thing although it could be that it was unrelated to the genetic problem that they were, were that might be true because you know the way they described it it was like because she was from she was bright but she came from a rich mm. family so she was given everything uh whatever she wanted she had no stimulus so that's why she was losing focus so much but don Kali said that if mm. she had what if she was given a correct stimulus like Liz thought that maybe you know surviving and going on the planet uh mm. That would make her really focused and on on the situation. Yeah, yeah. Once she has something to do, she seems to kind of latch onto it and and s- stick with it for a, fairly intensely, at least so, for a certain period of time, and then so eventually maybe gets bored. More, more like an autism sort of, at least some sort of spectrum of autism compared um, in her. Yeah, maybe most autism spectrum disorder stuff like I would the quickly bored thing wouldn't really fit with that. It's ADHD, usually, I guess, yeah a lot usually a lot more like long able to retain att- mm-hmm. attention on something so I, yeah I, I think ADHD is better probably okay. a better fit well I mean so all all of those like mental trait characteristics from um, autism spectrum to attention to um, like depressive mm-hmm. spectrum to um, like bipolar all of those things tend they're not really like binary oh, no, diagnoses no, yes, right. they're yes. The dimensions along which all of us have some uh, uh, like degree of a particular trait, right? And w- once you end up with like extreme values on a, on a given axis for say depressiveness or say you know a, a, a ability to retain attention or whatever, like if you're way out on the extreme of one of those distributions or, or multiple versions of those distributions, then you might hit like a, a cluster of problems that means you have a particular diagnosis. But for the most part, they're kind of continuous traits that we all have in some degree. But uh, once they get to certain extreme values, then they become labeled as particular mm. pathologies. Yeah, I mean, this is, you know, we can't really tell what, the, but maybe it will be told next chapter or so about what it could be. Mm. But yeah, it might be something like that, uh, or maybe completely not. Mm. Um, 
Yeah, who knows? So we are told that she attempted suicide twice before the war, but after the war, she fought to live. She was trying to help people, so she found the focus and she, uh, you know of her life. So I I think that was the reason why she tried to attempt suicide is because she basically felt there's nothing in the world that would keep her in place like you know hmm. but then when all the situation happened was she found the focus to you know to help people and she was good at manipulating people and the way she described the book there had been times when she withdrew from people to protect them from the possible consequences of her own frustration she had withdrawn from several men this way occasionally pairing them off with female friends couples she brought together tended to marry I think it was the the Uloi that was interrogating her thought that she was more like an Uloi mm. than a female, but like specifically because of this this manipulativeness <laughs> and um, like ability to kind of make people uh, like manipulate people without making yes, them feel yes. manipulated. Scary. Um, which uh, I think that's a, a little bit telling about how the Uloi. To be work. honest, we could tell that <laughs> from the very start. Like, I mean. Even Lilith was mm. self-aware of what was happening, how they manipulated mm-hmm. her into doing things that she did. Mm. Like, it was pretty obvious, wasn't it? Like, all those things that were happening around her. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, but it's good because I, th- well, obviously we find that um, she would be a good choice as a first person, uh, whereas Lilith sort of decides later. So we're told that Lilith... Mm. Mm? Yeah, I think... Also, the like her physical attributes, right? She's she's kind of yes. quite small and young looking, um, which I think uh, as someone who's not very physically intimidating, um, I think Lilith is, is definitely wanting someone who's not going to be too much of a uh, sort of physical threat either to her or well, I mean, she's stronger, she knows she can handle it, but also to to um, the others mm-hmm. that she wakes up no honestly and yes you, you uh, you're correct and also i would say also uh, she would be i would say so lacking in um threat like characteristic that mm. you know people maybe would ignore her while she could manipulate them in any way she wanted mm. so mm. it's a interesting mix of characteristics that make you know make her good and what she was and my i.e manipulating people I think she does actually make quite a good uh, choice mm. for the first person to awaken, even though I, I could see potential issues arising if, if someone who's prone to get bored with stuff and and manipulates people, right? Let's see, like, it could have some yeah. backfire consequences down Just... the line. But yeah, it's, just, it's an interesting collection of people, right? Because we've got lots of very different characters and we get quite sort of deep insights into their character because it's usually you know what what's been shown about them in fairly extreme circumstances like mm. solitary confinement and, and survival post-war it's really weird to be honest i feel like this collection of people aren't if i was choosing people that are supposed to go back on the planet right to survive and to rebuild the society I would be trying to have people who have some engineering backgrounds, people who actually know how to, you know, chemi- like chemists, like who, material chemists who can, you know, use the, um, or geologists, mm. people like that who have the knowledge of the, what to look into the env- in the environment to, um, to decide what's the, you know, what would be the best way to utilize the environment around them to sort of start building up the civilization back again. So people who know, I know that the earth was changed, but like the geology wouldn't yeah. change that much. So for example, if mm. somebody is good in the, the geology of the area they're finding, right, the, they are going to be sent on the planet or on the earth. I would look for someone who knows the geography quite well. So they know like, oh, there's these materials here, the mine, the mine for this was there here, and blah, blah, blah. So that whenever you start the civilization, at least you have the jumpstart like the the first sort of um you're ahead of the usual you know farming bronze uh copper items bronze items and then yes. iron and stuff like that you know as the usual although i suppose if you think about this through the the lens of oankali technology right it's all 
biological. Yes, but at the same time, it's a mix at the moment, don't you think, Richard? Because it's it's like they're supposed to, the Onkali are going to go down on Earth with humans. But I feel like it's not, it's going to be a mix of them. So, like, it, it wouldn't be just pure organic straight away. Yeah, yeah, as, as if they're trying to rebuild a, a kind of hybrid. I think I think at the beginning at least it'll be a hybrid thing, as you say. But later on, probably it will be more like on Kali. But it just feels to me that initially, because they are basically human, um, the first steps would be to develop the society in the form of you know building cities, use utilizing the knowledge of like people who know their stuff, so specialized people, you know people who know a bit of blacksmithing mm. so metallurgy um survival i mean i think later on they will be probably taught how to survive on the planet so that's not a problem but like things like farming and things like that you know it's it's that type of people i will be looking for not actors yeah, although yeah, that saying would... that you know it's good to have someone in the uh, in your environment who's good into um leading or at least raising the morale of the people and communicating so you know if Lilith was struggling to communicate something and then somebody steps out and it's like what Lilith is trying to say is blah 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 and then people are like hmm hmm oh yes now you make sense yes and Lilith's just like thank you and then it's like but you're undermining my uh, <laughs> leadership basically two camps are forming and we're all gonna die wonderful hmm. basically Michael predicted the book too <laughs> yes <laughs> Okay, right. <laughs> so we, well, let's go back to the summary. So we've had the summary of the potential candidates to be awakened. And this is where mm -hmm. it's something interesting. There's a few um, sort of abilities that uh, Lilith and Onkali have actually, in fact. So Lilith puts down the, the Tate uh, Mars dossier alongside of Joseph Shing, the engineer who uh, she thought maybe would be a good idea to awaken. And as Richard mentioned that, Tate was like childlike in her f physique, small, pale. Mm. And the pictures in the dossiers that Lilith was given actually were no photos, but they were actually recreations of the memories of the from the Onkali interrogators who painted the pictures with the sensory arms. So this, this was interesting that they were able mm. to reproduce that image of that, whatever they saw with their sensory organs, with the, using their organic mucus that they were, or chemicals they were releasing. Hmm. Yeah, they have this kind of ability to just paint a sort of photographic grade image with bodily secretions, which is uh, honestly cool. like you know those you know this feeling when you see a picture <laughs> and you thought, oh, I could draw this, and you start drawing, and it looks like basically you, I don't know, broke your arm in several places, and it's just it's just <laughs> like no, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I would like to have the ability to yeah. recreate what my mind tells you know shows me. Obviously, without all mm -hmm. the you know years of practice, you need to uh, um, to reach that level because I'm so lazy. <laughs> uh, oh, that's, um, oh, you, have you ever read the the Inheritance Cycle? Yes, of by course. Christopher Big fun. Well, yeah, because oh yeah, yeah, I remember now. Yeah, because there's a there's a, a magic like that in that thing. Is that they create uh, what do they call them? Firths. Ah, yes, the, the imagination it's a, like a of the, it's the memory or the imagination you you put in. And hmm. yeah, there was the scene with Aragon um, doing the painting of Arya. It yeah, makes one and of it's Arya. just like all you know, yeah. pinky and how beautiful she is, and she basically like just freaks out and breaks <laughs> in pieces. Yeah, it's kind of a like, careful yeah. what you wish for, right? If the the mental representation of uh, uh, your crush in his case <laughs> is, uh, may or may not actually uh, reveal. But to uh, be honest, something you to want be honest, to reveal. that scene was so like, I don't know what the hell did the I don't remember the the um, elf that was training Aragon at the time was thinking, but like. Um, at the time yeah. when they were actually practicing it and it's like, oh, Arya comes in and I'm like thinking, hmm, oh, this might be, you know, this definitely will not go uh, highway, you know, it's just, it's not going to be like, it's like yeah. this whole situation. Like if I was his trainer, I'd be like, um, knowing I did how much I know about him, can you please go away? Because even though you're the princess, because we know what's going to happen in a second. Yeah, well, maybe it's just a... a he viewed it as a learning opportunity, the sort of thing you have to uh, endure. Yeah. 
in order to oh, actually honestly. learn from it. But, uh, as no, much as nice. I love to s- uh, that trilogy, uh, well, that series of books, the mm. Aya Aragon relationship grinded me so hard; it got on my nerves. <laughs> yeah. We should yeah, let's not go, go too, too much, much that, because, I mean, that there might be some people who haven't read this book. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, I mean, the, indeed. But just, just the, 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 the concept, though, of being the, of taking a mental image and kind of projecting it onto a, uh, onto a photograph from, from that book is, yes, I think, somewhat yes. similar to this concept, because it seems like um, it's not just a photographic representation, but rather it contains some degree of impression mm-hmm. of the person that the Owen Carly has of them uh, as, in addition to a physical representation. Yeah. So it's it's quite a fascinating way of like the ability to reproduce the image. And I think later on we are showed that those images actually contain those chemicals that sort of allow basically to find where the uh, person is sleeping. It's like the, it reacts to it. It's like Lilith sort of takes that image uh, touches it and then just touches the wall trying to like so basically it's like masked yeah it seems it seems to be some kind of a key yeah she like takes the photograph and kind of runs it along the surface of the wall where all of the hibernation plant things are and when she gets to the pod that contains the person that the image is of she has like a a, a sensation that tells yeah. her that this is where that person is so back into because almost we're almost finished with the chapter so um basically while after deciding sort of lulith makes a new room for the next awakened person so she drew two walls as the book describes to within about 18 inches of each other the left a uh, that left a narrow doorway one that would preserve as much privacy as possible without a door uh, she also turned on, she turned one wall inward, forming a tiny entrance hole that concealed the room itself from casual glances. Um, she said that there was nothing that anyone could steal because everything was provided by the ship, but she wanted to prevent any peeping on, to, on people. And then within the room, Lily mm-hmm. raised a bed, a table, a three chairs uh, around that table, so a more like human arrangement compared to the Onkali style she had in her own um cage when she was walking up so Lilith gathered as we mentioned earlier all dossiers but 11 uh, of them and sealed them inside of her platform and those 11 would become the core of her group and the first one as uh, we spoiled a bit uh, to awaken was Tate Mara and as Richard mentioned Mm. you know by rubbing her hand across the surface of Tate's picture, she rubbed her hand then against the wall and then when wherever Tate was sleeping, the wall would react to indicating this is where the plant with Tate is. And basically the wall reacted by forming a bulge, indicating the person is sleeping in the, the... So she opened the wall, revealing the long green plant with Tate sleeping inside it. The plant lay writhing slowly, still surrounded by the foul, foul odor that had followed it through the wall. She could not see well enough through the thick flesh, uh, fleshy body to know which end concealed Tate's uh, Mara's head, but that did not matter. She drew her hands along the length of the plant as though unzipping it and it began to come apart. The plant, though, this time would not try to swallow her because her body chemistry was more like a non-Kali, so the plant wouldn't try to hmm. eat it for its own energy. And the chapter ends basically with Lilith removing Tate from the plant because Tate would not awaken until her body was completely out of the plant. Yeah, so... Okay, yeah, so we left on kind of a, a cliffhanger of uh, what what Tate and what the subsequent people who get woken up will be like and how you know that what? whole uh, little situation will unfold. I'm going to, for my prediction, add another type of prediction. Who mm-hmm. is going to be awakened next? I think that'll be good. Okay. Sort of mental gymnastic, yeah, yeah. I would say. So shall we go to my prediction, chapter two prediction? Yeah, let's do that. This chapter, I think, will be described the first time to take Tate waking up and being, you know, apprehensive towards Lilith, you know, what, what's going on and stuff like that. And it will be the struggle, the first sort of struggle description of Lilith trying to get people used to her and her abilities. And the next person, I think, that 
Lilith will wake up. Although it really just suggests that Joseph Shing would be the next best choice. And actually might be him, I feel like. it's if, if she left him, because he was the first one she had really strong feeling to awaken. So maybe it might be him. But I think it will be followed uh, followed up by um, maybe... Maybe... What was the name of the lady? Uh, Leah Beattie. Uh, there was uh, Lee? Leah Beattie, yeah. Or like Leah? The, the, the lady who was so, you know... Patient, it's a very patient lady. So I think that they hmm, that yeah. would be the best sort of first two people after Tate to awaken. Okay, so you're thinking Joseph yes, yes, and that's Leah. The, that's the next set of people to reawaken. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's Lee or Leah, but uh, yeah, it's L E A H. But yeah, uh, yeah. So there's quite quite a lot of new names yeah, it's, in this I, section. Honestly, I am already annoyed because I will not remember them the next time we record. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I. There's a lot of them. I barely remember. Them. <laughs> I remember all of them, and I'm not confused. So, names. it's gonna be interesting. I feel like this is this chapter was long because mm. there was a lot of description of the people. We've learned that Lilith had some new mm. powers to on the ship. I just wonder though about those powers that Lilith has. You know, how will they translate on the Earth? Um, yeah, well, I suppose it's it's only really relevant for interacting with Owen Kali yeah. organisms. Because, I mean, you know, the memory, awesome. Her increased strength, yes. Oh, yeah. um, but, hmm. you know, it's still, even though her, you know, probably the increased muscle density, uh, the fiber density and her muscles, but she's still not going to be as strong as a male, especially, you know, if they're going to have to survive in the wilderness carrying heavy stuff. Um, a lot of men will hmm. grow much bigger muscles than females are physically possible. Unless they, Onkali made a surprise uh, gift to Lilith and she's going to look like a three, you know, seven meter tall Goliath. <laughs> <laughs> seven foot more likely, I suppose, right? Seven meters yeah, would be you know, a Why excessive. not? Seven meter, you know, like, <laughs> that'd be awesome. But anyway. <laughs> yeah. I, it uh, yeah, this leaves it very kind of open ended. There's lots of interesting stuff to find out. I'd say this. Uh, I mean, the Quite a book has fourteen. This section has fourteen chapters, right? So yeah. it feels that if she is supposed to, and the next section is called training, meaning that by the end of this nursery mm-hmm. chapter, it will be I think Lilith coming out from the with the group of 40 people right so in those 14 chapters she needs to awaken 14 uh, 40 people right so i at least 40 people at so least. it feels to me that the first chapter the second chapter 2 is going to be with Tate and then it, it feels to me a bit short like that this section i mean you could write the whole book just by um getting used to the people and you know the interaction with them and then finishing the book with all the group of people you know coming out and then and this is the next book next book starting with um mm-hmm. the training and preparation for the uh embarking on the journey to the earth yeah as there's a lot of potentially interesting group dynamics to explore yeah so i feel section. like we might be seeing some chapters skipping through people being awakened but them already being awake but in their own respective rooms and Lilith just jumping from back and forth from room to room just to try to discuss things with people or talking to them trying to get them used to uh, the situation or maybe she will just basically release the crack and let them all out talking to each other and so do you think that she'll uh, do you want to speculate some more about her strategy I for, think for what's going to happen up? is that first of all she will try to wake up the core 10 so of so people right the you know the people she can rely on mm-hmm. then obviously while doing individually and then sort of making them meet each other um because obviously they need contact mm-hmm. with you know humans need contact with each other i'm sure there's gonna be some tension some sexual tension between uh, some of them um <laughs> so it might be interesting uh, you know uh it that might be something something to 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 wo- to look at uh, um for well not for but like to to watch out for um between them Mm -hmm. but once she has those group of 11 people she will start waking up some of them in sort of maybe groups of two or three 
so that you know all the information they get from is that you know they sit down together and you know just like you know explain to those uh, new people what the situation is and then slowly getting used to it and then you know because okay. one by one you know it's okay but you know people will be talking in the background and be like mm-hmm. are we really on our own yeah. or is there somebody else there and you know it's it's breaks the sort of immersion of like you know mm-hmm. so i think that Lilith will utilize the help of other of the core group to sort of help people to bring them in the idea and i think what's gonna happen between okay. like that oh, i don't know it, it might be happened that the onkali will come and you know realize that to, to meet for example nikanj will come in to uh to say hi and then they'll be like what the hell and then somebody will try something stupid so Okay, yeah, yeah, it'll be interesting to see that bit when uh, uh, how how the exposure of the group to the Onkali goes. Eventually. I mean, you know, the fact is, like, I'm sure there'll be a scene where a single Onkali will appear because I mean, there those guys were already interrogated by the Onkali, so they are sort of used to the. Um, well, I don't know if we know whether or not they were interrogated in person. Ah, uh, yes, because right? some of them. Because I think it might yes. be the same thing as yes, the yes, initial yes. experience, where it's just you know. <clears throat> That's correct. To the but... room. Ah yes, that's true. So maybe it's not some of them. maybe maybe it, uh, most of them haven't actually seen on Kali. They just heard the voices. But mm. um, no, I suppose that raises the possibility of of skepticism about the whole description. Yeah, of but the scenario, moment right? uh, Lilith just shows them she can grow walls, and then I would be like, "Cool, yes, that we're definitely somewhere weird." Um, yeah, it's gonna be mm. difficult. I wish Liv all the best. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's a, a, she's been dropped in another challenging situation. Man, I really admire her, like, to have the strength to continue. Yeah, yeah. That's a, a, I think they, they definitely ended up um, sort of picking a good person for this job. Um, she has the, the characteristics necessary to do this. I wonder what's going to happen well. once they're on the planet, like, you know, with the order on Kali as well with them. Just, I, I'm 100% there's going to be some sort of civil war. There's no chance that's not going to happen. That's like, the book is just already screaming this will happen. Just a question when. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's a oh, no, long term absolutely. It probably not happen. It's not going to happen this book. I think what's going to happen this book is that it's going to end up just before Lilith is embarking on the journey back to Earth, and the next book is going to be about okay. them being on the on Earth back again. You know, the whole like maybe skip few few months or a year, sort of like them building up the society, and then story. You know what's happened. You know so far, and then you know all this. Try little troubles, people maybe trying to establish a new uh, new sort of a, a settlement somewhere, and then that settlement breaking away and you know causing a civil war and blah blah blah. I'm sure that's gonna happen. This is okay. Okay. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yep, I, I, I like the direction you're going with these uh, long term predictions. I mean, those long term predictions are easier than the the chapter to chapter ones. I have no idea where this guy. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the sort of broader structure is a little bit easier to, to discern, I suppose. I just wondered, right, though, I had this... Sorry, just one thing before we finish. I just had this speculation about mm-hmm. other alien species than Nonkali visiting the mm-hmm. Earth. I just wonder if it if that is possibility of happening, right? You know, this is like, you know, suddenly the, the, the ship of the Nonkali that are, you know, above the Earth and suddenly there's another alien species suddenly attacking or something. Okay, yeah. It's a speculation, yeah, I know, so I, I can't really say it's anything. A sad, it's a sad <laughs> life I'm living right now. And it's going to be like that until we finish all the books. Oh, I suppose it's an interesting one with um, like the Onkali encountering their cousins, as it were, right? So the previous groups mm. who've branched off, that could be a thing, right? They could, because uh, they do all this spreading out and branching into different subgroups, so they, they might... You know, re-encounter one another but with different um having done different trades yeah i mean it's 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 a it's a quite a weird thing because when they mentioned that their whole planet right they never go back to their planet never described why Mm. although they said like you don't go back to their womb okay i get it but like 
it's um is the planet mm-hmm. still a barren or is there still you know do people still li- you know the onkali live on it and i just felt to me like well, it sounds like they've been doing this long enough that that planet may well have ceased to be habitable potentially anymore. it's just but in the same time it feels to me like as if onkali was like a cosmic parasite just going from planet absorbing other species into themselves and then just you know more and more mm. and eventually you know in several million of years or billions of years the whole universe is just a non kali yeah just filled up with the non kali <laughs> i suppose they, they might have like another mode of of reproduction almost like when when they so instead of interacting with a new species they interact with another branch of and their sh- own yeah um, and they do the trade with them interesting possibility and on that note let's finish <laughs> this episode um yes so everyone this was the chapter one from part three nursery of the book one dawn you can find this podcast basically almost every podcasting media but if you want to find all of them you can go on our website xenothesis.com i was michael klinker i've been rich dankton and thank you very much everyone for listening bye thank you bye